I'm going to call the meeting to order. Welcome to the September meeting of the Berwick Historical Society. We have a special guest today, who is my new friend Wendy. We met last week because she's visiting our Berwick from her Berwick, which she will tell you all about. We had a wonderful coffee on Friday, which I'm sure you will also hear about. And we were both, I think, um, dazzled by the parallels between uh, our positions in media and also our towns. It's um, remarkable in so many ways how much Berwick in the UK parallels our much younger Berwick here in the US. Thank you so much for being here. You're very Please welcome. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Yeah, so this is kind of the most bizarre coincidence. And um, I got in touch with Jeremy just because I was going to be visiting cousins. And I just looked at the map and I couldn't believe there was a Berwick half an hour away from Agonquit where we, I was visiting. And so as I was saying to some of the other uh, visitors, I sort of reached out just to say hi. And I couldn't believe, I mean, how open hearted the response was. Must come and have a coffee. And as Jeremy's alluded to, and we sat and uh, the work that we're trying to do, the coincidences and the challenges and the um, rewards that we're seeing are just so overlapping. It's really quite weird, actually. And I think I have to say that, as I don't know how many of you are sort of long time Berwickers, are you Berwickers? Is that what you call yourselves? Because I, Berwickers or Ber Berwick people. <laughs> I mean, I think I, I think you're very lucky to um, have uh, have Jeremy pitch up and sort of uh, obviously he's a, as your champion. He's obviously passionate about your town, which is you know more than half the battle. So he's he uh, said, "Would I come and meet you?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to." And then he two days later he said, "Would you come and talk?" <laughs> so I was trapped <laughs> at that point. So. As it's historical, I sort of did a quick run through. I'm not a historian. I um, started a newsletter in Berwick on Tweed in the north of England. Um, so I've had to learn a quick crash course in Berwick's history myself. Although, as you know, when you live in a historical area, you kind of absorb so much by osmosis. We've got lots of interpretation boards around town. So you, And I'm new to the town. I've only been there two years. So I'm... As an outsider, I'm learning all the time anyway, so I have picked up quite a bit. Um, and uh, But I have to say, I didn't even think that there were people living there. I mean, I worked out, if I've got my dates right, I mean, there have been people there for 2,000 years, but I suppose there have been people everywhere for that length of time, just sort of different. So they were the, the ancient Britons. But it's weird, when you're going around and you're doing your shopping and going to the library and parking your car, you don't think about people having been there doing stuff for 2,000 years. So that's been, that's kind of opened my eyes anyway myself. So I thought um, I would, uh, you know, obviously with 2,000 years there's a lot to say. So I thought I'm not going to start at the beginning and go through. So I kind of thought about some of the things that have stood out to me since I moved there and been told and learned. And uh, so basically you probably want to know where it is geographically. I don't have any illustrations, I'm afraid. But uh, obviously I'd be delighted to share links and photos and things uh, in due course. Um, so, yeah, it's Northumberland, so whoever's fam familiar with the layout of England, are you? Have you heard of Northumberland? Yeah, and I, um, my mother and I were over there visiting, and so we did go through Berwick-upon-Tweed. Oh, did you? We were heading up to uh, Edinburgh. On the train? Yeah. Yes, yeah. this is what everybody yeah. says, I've been through it on the train, but yeah. I've never got out. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't driving. No, no. So that's one of my challenges with the town, uh, is to sort of try and get people to get out of the train and come and see us and see what's there. There's so much there, but whether it's been cherished enough and promoted enough is, you know, is questionable. So it's uh, right at the top of England. It's only three miles from the Scottish border. So um, that means that it, ch it actually changed, can we say ownership or governance, 13 times between England and Scotland. They fought over it. It's a very prosperous, uh, it was a port, it was a second port 
off to London. And in fact, there's a quotation here about it being called um, another Alexandria, which of course is Egypt, whose riches were the sea and the water its walls. So um, it had European trade and that kind of made it really wealthy. And I guess that made it strategically important as well on the river and people wanted a slice of that, um, of that cash. Uh, I think from what I've learned today, it was, well, first of all, it was probably a, a settlement because the river was rich with salmon. Not so much salmon now. We protect our seals, and so the seals eat it all. And also, um, there are things slightly political, but it's on the Tweed, Berwick upon Tweed, which is a very, so that was the border as well at some point between Scotland and England. And it's angling water, so uh, pr you sell the rights to, for people to go privately with a rod and fish. So that's quite a big industry for the landowners. So, you know, they want to protect the fish that they've got for their customers rather than... We've still got one net fishery, unbelievably. It's a thousand-year-old tradition, and there's, it used to be all the way along the Tweed, and there's one left. I mean, it's almost like a sort of um, um, indulgence because the, I think they get <coughs> some fish, and it probably gets sent to London because it's very expensive wild salmon, as we know. But I think in the medieval period, it was wool because wool was such an important um, commodity. There are probably historians here who know more about that than I. So that's probably what the port value was, that they were kind of shipping stuff in. I suppose the wool came and then they would possibly, you know, be exchanging goods and a market town. Um, so... Uh, now, what was the first thing I was going to tell you about that was sort of mostly of in more juicy bits and pieces? Um, yes, yeah, so this tussling between England and Scotland, you know, was a pawn in a lot of ways. And there was a terrible uh, moment when Edward I, so we're talking about 1296. So I'm going to read some of these things off because I don't know. I'm, oh, so it was Scottish. But Edward I regarded it as a sort of a vassal, like a little vassal state that he could kind of run in a feudal sense. So he asked, um, I'm just going to read this out. Invade, England went to war with France. And Scotland, of course, the old alliance, was always very close to France. Uh, the King of Scotland invaded England in response. And... Uh, in return for that, that he was being betrayed, Edward I basically sacked the whole of Berwick and he slaughtered all, like they're saying, about 7,500 people. It was just awful, men, women and children, to teach them a lesson. And the rivers ran, the streets ran with blood and even the rivers so that the mill was turning with blood. It was just so awful. And then he even left all the corpses. He didn't, um, you know, as further punishment, he didn't kind of do Christian burials and things. He just left them there as a reminder of his power. Um, so, I mean, this, I was trying to tell Jeremy uh, the, about the personality. The Beric personality is a very s sort of suppressed character. And I said to him, why do the Berickers have things done to them? So he told me this story and said, so you see, basically, they're used to having things done to them. They're used to being mistreated, so, which is terrible, isn't it? Because that's 1296, how many hundred years ago? Uh, so, and also because of this back and forth, there were a lot of soldiers in Berwick. And in those days, um, they used to be billeted in people's homes, sort of military Airbnb, I suppose it would have been. <laughs> um, but at a certain point, the housewives got a bit sick of these, uh, these guys, these squaddies going in and out. You can imagine the carousing and the bad behavior, the fighting and the boozing and everything. So the first barracks in the UK was built in Berwick. And that was also partly because of the Scottish-English thing. The, the Jacobites had to be suppressed at this point, so they had to get sort of organised. Uh, and that was built by uh, someone called Nicholas Hawksmoor, um, and he built some beautiful churches in London. So this fact that there's this connection with Berwick and this wonderful architect is incredible. Um, and it's a wonderful Georgian building, it's still there, complete. And there are plans to turn it into a sort of art studio. It's, it's ha houses the museum, but it's sort of a piece of real estate that um, people think you know, could be exploited. And that's true. It's just whether it's feasible, because it's a very ancient building, and wiring, and insulation, and stuff like this, nightmare. And in some parts of it, you can see um, like the eaves. So there's like the eaves holding up the ceiling and in between there are 
there's graffiti that they've made with candle smoke. And it was absolutely fascinating that they've managed to keep it there, sort of put their names and put the dates. So that's really charming. So hopefully they will obviously will try and preserve that with whatever they end up doing. And it was um, the King's Own Scottish Borders, a famous regiment um, that's n now been kind of merged elsewhere. But that was their home for many years. And there's still some traditional military stuff going on. It's a military town in a lot of ways. Uh, another thing that was a bit odd is that... Um, so... <laughs> At the Crimean War, which was 1853, uh, the declaration of war was signed by Victoria, and she wrote, Victoria, Queen of Great Britain, Ireland, Berwick upon Tweed, and all British dominions, mm -hmm. because of this, this, this kind of sort of tussle. It was obviously still had its own identity. So the Crimea War uh, was um, fought and ended, but the, when the Treaty of Paris was signed to we're at peace, so we signed this treaty. They forgot to write Berwick on Tweed. So she declared war on Berwick on Tweed and all the others, but hadn't put, we're at peace with them now. So effectively, Russia was still at war with <laughs> Berwick on Tweed <laughs> until 1966. <laughs> this is a bit mythical, actually, but it's quite funny to kind of think of it. And then apparently in 1966, the London correspondent of Pravda visited the mayor of Berwick, somebody called Councillor Robert Knox, and the two made a mutual declaration of peace. <laughs> and uh, Robert Knox said, please tell the Russian people through your newspaper that they can sleep peacefully in their beds. <laughs> no, they're, they're not at war with Berwick. And that appeared in the Baltimore Sun, apparently, that story as well, in 1966 on the Washington Post. Anyway, that was quite fun. And uh, so then there's sort of lots of information about, uh, it was also known as South Berwick. There is a North Berwick or Berwick, which is in Scotland and it's a very nice seaside town. Uh, so apparently to distinguish them both, our Berwick was South Berwick, but at, as far as long as I've known it, it's always been Berwick. Uh, another uh, feature, I mean, so many of these things are still there, you know, so that we have these, it, it's a, a a fortified town. So we have Elis Elizabethan town walls. So Queen Elizabeth, because um, all the walls were kind of rotting and it wasn't enough to keep the Scots out. So she, uh, <laughs> she, struck, she commissioned um, these fabulous walls, which are still nearly complete the whole way around the town. And um, it was the most expensive structure that she paid for during her reign. And it cost, uh, I think it was something like £126,000. So <laughs> and she had an Italian to, uh, to design it. Uh, and that's wonderful to walk because it's a wonderful view. And you just, um, it, I can't really describe the kind of intricacy of the design because they actually, it has a sort of great big ditch. So you walk along the wall and there's a great big ditch. And then at certain points, they had hidden cannon. So somehow these cannon, we know a bit like uh, James Bond or something, mm -hmm. they, they would catch the, they were planning to catch the enemy unawares because they were constantly, you know, if people wanted to get it, then they were constantly bombarded by cannon uh, from the sea. Um, and so I haven't quite worked out how that went. I don't think it ever came to fruition that it would work as, as planned, but it's fascinating to look at and a wonderful walk. And you're looking out at the sea nearly all the way around as well. So um, there we are. I, I think that, I mean, you know, there's so much that uh, I could go into in the intricacies, um, but I think that it might be, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, so we still have this England-Scotland thing. There's a team in England, the Berwick Rangers, and they play in the Scottish, the Scottish uh, division. So that's a bit odd. But so if I just go through the range of ages of buildings that we still have visible. So the castle, 13th century, uh, was falling down in the 17th century and then they knocked it down to, to put the railway station in, which is a shame, but there's still ruins of that. Then the walls I've told you about, which were 1560, the Elizabethan walls. Berwick Bridge, 1624, we've just celebrated the 400th anniversary of our wonderful old stone bridge. And uh, we had a great weekend. We had uh, people dressed up as uh, Elizabethans and um, Tudors and so on. We had uh, lots of fun. It was great. The children did little um, pageants and things. 
And uh, I mean, when I moved there, that was kind of one of the things that was just really thrilling because I walk along, I'm on the south side of the river and I walk along there to get to the shops and you sort of walk along and you kind of touch these stones and you just think this is crazy, 400 years of people doing the same thing, which is wonderful. And the views over the river, fantastic. The barracks I've told you about, so that was, they were built 1717 to 1721, still there. We have a Georgian town hall and uh, which is a beautiful building with a spire and um, right in the town center and underneath it was a sort of a more a sort of protected area but it was very cool so it was called the butter market because then you could have your butter and cheese wouldn't be in the sun and uh, also i gather that it was uh, it was like the servant market the hiring of servants which is what they used to do you would come obviously and the, the uh, landlords would come and, and choose pick their staff and apparently they used to just plead, can we please just have salmon twice a day <laughs> instead of, because it was so plentiful, they were being fed it three times a day and they would just plead only twice a day. Um, and then after that is the Royal Border Bridge, which is a Victorian structure, which is also fantastic. And that will be 175 years old next year. So that was 1850 and Queen Victoria came to not to open it but I suppose she came to inspect it and she stayed for five minutes apparently <laughs> and went off with Albert to go and have a nice lunch somewhere else unimpressed um, and then the more recent is another road bridge 1928 the Prince of Wales who was uh, became Edward the eighth 1928 he came to open that so all of these things these all through how many hundreds of years is that from sort of the remains of the castle up to 1928 all of those things are still in existence and it's just wonderful um, and more even more if I if I was more informed about the history I could tell you so there we are that's a little run through Berwick and its monuments and its history and who knows maybe one day you'll come and see them yourself <laughs> so yeah. thank you for inviting me thank you so much I hope I was interested <laughs> Yeah. Will you tell Question. us a little bit about your newsletter? And what yes, works? of course. So it's called The Bridge. And um, I, I'm a trained, jour qualified journalist, and I got to Berwick. And uh, this is the same everywhere. In fact, the, in America, you were starting to kind of do something about it. But of course, local journalism is dying, very local journalism. And uh, it's co that is causing huge problems. I mean, I think even well-being, because people aren't informed enough about what's going on in their towns, the, in the events that they would, because not everybody's on Facebook, and Facebook seems to be what's taken over from our original regional paper, which everybody used to read, you know, every week, it would have tens of thousands of circulation. The price goes up, they remove their reporter from our town, so someone remote who's not sort of plugged into the community, people know that it's not authentic, they lose interest. And um, of course, like being new, you can kind of see you have a bit more of an objective view. And I could tell talking to people that this is such a fabulous town and it does, it looks a bit rubbish. Um, and sort of had to interview and ask people. And I got this feeling that people were just not getting information. They didn't know what the council was doing. And um, that was, as I've explained to Jeremy, there was sort of, that was a political thing benefiting one person. So I just kind of thought, I have these skills. I mean, I did one issue. I didn't really think about what would come after that, that I would have to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was February last year. And um, it was print, because I thought this community would probably prefer to have print. And then in any case, they didn't know me, so how would I market it to people? I, w I would have to sort of talk to every person who came by and said, I've got a website about local news. I mean, I really didn't think about it all too much. I just kind of plunged in. And so uh, it's kind of worked out and um, it's going the way I want. It's been jolly hard work. It's gone down to every two months now in print. And I started a website, thebridgeberwick.co.uk so that I can probably get more information. And I, I'm sad to say I probably will end up going on, online mostly because it is so much easier and there's no cost. I mean, some month I really had to scrape together the print costs month to month. It was hand to mouth. 
but I got subscribers came on early, advertisers came on early, a sponsor came on right at the beginning, incredible, the <coughs> Chamber of Trade. I couldn't believe it. And so it did manage to kind of limp along. And, um, and then I got nominated, it got nominated for an award this year for a best community, local or community newsletter. So this is a great boost and great marketing boost because you can tell people, you know, this isn't rubbish. Some people think this is quite good. <coughs> so, uh, and I'm selling it. So I'm um, little, but I just got word yesterday that one of my outlets is sold out. So I'm going to have to sort of try and a bit difficult when I'm in uh, Maine to restock, but I, I'll hopefully manage to work it out. And uh, so important. I mean, you are happy. You've got good news provision, have you, locally? No. Did you have a good provision in, in 20 years ago that's now evaporated or you never had? I miss our little weekly paper that we get on Thursdays. Yeah, well, Thursday was already. Was already. Yeah. yeah. Which they still have, but is less print. It doesn't come directly to the home. Yes. They have it online, and then in certain places you can pick it up. Oh. Yeah, is, it, do they, is it for free, or do you have to pay? It is free. free. Yeah, well, that's quite good, that. And so... Well, it, for news, the local paper <laughs> stopped covering Berwick, I would say, about 15 years ago. Really? Yeah. Really? So they're not even, you don't have anything, even if it's written by somebody who's 50 miles away. Well, we do have Berwick Community Media, which has filled that gap. And yes. It's amping up, I think, to fill more of that gap. So do you think that, uh, I'll do a bit of market research for you, do you think that that BMC should be carrying more news or would be good to be have news? Because you're doing features, really, aren't you? Features and council reporting. Would that be of interest, do you think, to have local news? There's a lot going on here, is there? I was wondering if you were a staff of one, or did you hire people, and how did you come well, up with the money for this? Well, it was ha literally hand to mouth. I, I funded the first two issues myself, because I thought, I'm not going to go around asking permission and getting people together to say yes, because that would just be delay, and you would lose the ner my nerve. I would have lost my nerve and just think, oh, this is really not a good move. Yeah. So I just did that. I just thought, I'll get it back later so i just took that risk uh so i can't remember no it wasn't a lot of a lot of money it was about 500 pounds probably to do two i did a lot a big print print run of 2000 because i just thought i'm just going to get it out there and give it to as many people as i can that's how it began and then the so i say the sponsor of the chamber of trade came on so that was good to get some breathing space and uh a guy who was a restaurateur said uh, he heard about me and he, after the first couple of issues he said i want to write so he came and he took up a bit of space. And then I had another idea for something else. The ship, we have a very, quite busy port, but it's kind of, nobody really was paying any attention to it. So I got someone to do a shipping report. So, you know, that was the bit of a breather because I didn't have to fill, it was only A3 folders. So it was four A4 pages, not many photos because I just didn't really have time to do that. Um, so that filled up that was half a page filled and then when you put the diary dates in that's another kind of half a page or three quarters page because there's so much going on um so i mean it was really it was a bit crazy really because i they, you know i was sort of choosing what the headline was and not really being a local so it was kind of but at the time i was also a counselor i in my efforts to try and how what shall i say make a difference i suppose nothing too grandiose as I say, having spoken to these people, I volunteered to sit on the town council. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, um, it's worth doing. And then other writers, that's what you asked me, yes, was I doing all the writing? And so let, the letters page, so people are being encouraged to send in letters, and that's been great. <laughs> so you should start, you should just start your own community newsletter. <laughs> I mean, you can start with the diary, yeah. I have Can a I question, but it's yeah. on a different Please, subject. Please, yes. I, I visited Burrough on Tweed. Did you? Yes. Wow, when were you there? Uh, 2008. Oh, wow, what did you think? Uh, I only spent a, a day, day and a half. Oh, wow, and that's it, quite a long time to be there, though. Yeah, yeah. Were you disappointed with the town a bit, or did you think it was okay? I thought it was okay. I was interested in the in the barracks. You know, yes, I did yes. That and I walked them. And yes. I went to uh, the library, and actually, I took the 
library, a, a little book that so, a booklet that someone had written about the uh, Scots prisoners of war. And oh wow, that'll still be there. It'll have got down there, that bar in Newcastle. And that will have gone. Auction. That'll have gone into our archive because we've got a very good archivist. Linda in the town, yes. so she will have got her hands on that. So who, who, what was the name of the author? I'm just going to write it down. Oh, Can you remember? I don't know. <laughs> so, but tell, so, but just tell me the outline of the was, content it, of it. It was on the uh, Scots prisoners. Wow. At the uh, Battle of Dunbar. Oh, Dunbar. Yes. Oh, I know where Dunbar is. Right. Okay. But I'm not even aware of that battle either. Gosh. And those prisoners became, you know, Your very important people in our community. Really, and really. Our community, but, you know, surrounding. About 150 were sent over from the Battle of Dunbar, and then a bunch more came from the Battle of Worcester. Okay. So do you think, I mean, I was trying to look at the origin of why this is Berwick, Berwick. Do you think, do you think it was they who named yes. it then? You knew and that. There, there was a real estate office in South Berwick that is Bowick. Yeah, because it, well, there was a bow. It, there's an old map that I found from uh, about 1621 or 1630, and it had Barwick for for our Berwick. So mm. ma maybe this was Barwick first, then, or oh, that's another town. Is that what you well, mean? No. Uh, was it here? It was all. All Berwick uh, initially. It was Kittery and then it was Berwick. And then right. The uh, north and south broke off from Berwick. Right. Fascinating. Wow. And the Scots stayed and then they settled and they yep. became community contributors. And married, you know, with yeah. the uh, English that were here. Right, right. Because they were mostly very young men. Yes. And, uh, well, and to be eligible for the transportation over here, they had to be between the age of 15 and 25, I think, or 30. Gosh. So they were all very young. Yeah, yeah. Well, exciting for them. The new, it probably wasn't even called the New World at that point, was it? Well, I don't know when well, the New World's term yeah, began. Pretty much still, because that was only 30 years after the Mayflower. Right. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, that's something I'm going to look up. So, yes, I mean, I would encourage if anybody, you don't have to be a great writer, you just have to kind of t let people know, especially the more elderly people in a community who kind of can start to feel isolated. They don't know what's going on. They're not looking at Facebook. So, yeah, you should go for it. I'm sure Jeremy will guide you. You've been so fabulous. You've been so <laughs> You're very cool. sweet. Really Thank sweet. you. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely to be asked. Really <laughs>